don't consider you here as a token uh, audience. I consider you... What we're doing is we're actually trying to understand the, the DWS system. DWS was created, uh, rolled out in January 1st of 2014. Prior to that, so on December 31st of 13, we were on an old system that had been around forever. We got paid the same amount for every person we served. Um, it, it had nothing really to do, so to speak, with the individual. It kind of operated on a cost average thing. If you had somebody you didn't need to help as much, you had somebody who you really need, and you hoped it all kind of balanced out. And I've been balancing for almost 30 years now, so I, I kind of get it. The new system is totally based different. And how it's different is it's supposed to be based on individual needs and individual rates. So whatever your needs are, the rates are supposed to support whatever it is you need in order to carry out your vocational goal with that rate. Okay? The other thing that it does is it, it um, <laughs> I'm trying to be really positive, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, it, it really did, what it did was it took a whole funding system and it dismantled it. And the reason that they did it, I say they, the reason the Department of Human Services in Minnesota did that is because CMS said, no longer, if you're going to spend waiver dollars, can you have the counties making decisions for the state dollars, okay? So waiver dollars are considered state state pass-through dollars. Um, in your office for a few years now, as Mary, I can only tell you my personal information, okay? And it ain't good. So I'm probably on the, I'm, I'm what they call a loser. <laughs> um, there's winners in the new system and losers, even though um, nobody at the Department of Human Services ever likes me to use those terms. But um, this building right here, which serves about 120 individuals, and overall, a, a fairly high-functioning group. I mean, um, you know, Jim tells you about his son that comes here. He drives here. He, this, is, this is where he works. This is his job. Okay? We stand to lose in 2019 when the whole system, find, there's five years' worth of protection or banding. When that finally gets fully implemented, this place will lose $336,000 a year in funding. If it stays the way it is. In the new system, we were promised that there would be what's called budget neutrality. So in 2013, whatever money was in the system for this service was supposed to continue to be in the system at the end in 2019 when the new system came out. Um, Currently, our data is showing we're about $14 million short, or more than that now. It's 20 now. Oh, it's 20 now. It grows. Okay? So what we're saying is it truly isn't the same amount of money at the beginning of the end. The other issue is when they started the new system in 2014, and this is how you guys as a group um, can really get involved and help us. There, there was... Whatever money was there in 13 when started in 14 is gone. So if they screwed up the system, whatever money was there is now gone. And the only way that that, if you think, if you think of it as a big pot of money, you think if they put all the pot, all the money that they started with in the pot and then figured out how to divide it up equally or fairly or whoever you wanted to do it, you should still have the same amount of money, right? Than reason, okay? That's not what happened. There's not all that money is not there. And the bad thing about it is, now that it's not there, starting January 1st of 14, the only way that we get to put it back in there is if you guys put it back in there. The only way in it's called it's new money now. Even though it's the old money, it's still called new money in the legislative process. Okay? That's the connection. That's the connection between how you can be involved to protect choices or protect the options that, that individuals have is to protect 
some form of those services. Precious people. Whether, whether you're one side or the other, it truly comes down to it, your daughter still needs it and your son still needs it. We need to know how can we influence the leadership and the governor if they have that kind of power to outrule a hundred of them. We started a couple of months ago basically a group of parents, self-advocates, um, anybody that was really concerned about people with disabilities. You know, we started to learn about the Olmstead Act and Mike Burke from AOC has done a tremendous job educating us. And the more that we learned, the more of a concern we you know, we're about what's going on. That's why we decided that we needed to get this legislative forum roundtable together and start to bring this out to all the legislators so they can understand what's going on. I think the best thing that happened was all of them were together and that they could, they heard the concern. They could hear the passion from other parents, from anybody in the audience. And I think now they realize that they're, they're this, there's something that needs to be done. This is only the beginning step. You know, we really need to start to keep on where we're at and continue to educate and continue to advocate for people with disabilities. I mean, we are just at such an elementary stage with this.